billionaire and Tesla CEO Elon Musk mentioned that his brainchild, Neuralink, could implant a chip into human brains uh, later this year. Uh, Neuralink is uh, aiming to develop a uh, implanted wireless high channel count brain machine interface uh, that intends to make advancements in this area of technology. Let's look at Naira Box over in Nigeria. Yes, Nigerian lifestyle platform Nairobox has announced the relaunch of its mobile app with a new cinema subscription feature. It will enable cinema goers to watch movies uh, for a particular monthly price, and they hope that this will bring folks back into theaters. So we're going to be talking about that with uh, Mayowa Ige, analyst with financial derivatives company Limited. Mayowa, you're welcome. Hello. Great to have you in here with us. Um, so yeah, what, what's, what's the story with Neuralink? Uh, what's the history of the company or... Like you said, it's one of um, Elon Musk's new baby. You know, he has the SpaceX, he has Tesla. This is his other business. It's basically a, a brain-computer interface technology company that de develops devices that um, help people with paralysis use their own brain activity to, con to um, control and use their computers and mobile devices with speed and with ease. So the idea is they plant a chip in your brain the size of a coin mm. and in your brain using a robotic surgeon and Elon Musk has actually said that he thinks that the resulting computing power from this technology would actually give human beings a competitive edge with developing um, artificial inter artificial intelligence rather and so um, and this is going to be I think is it a humans that are going to be implanting this thing or uh, or a uh, or a machine um, a robot that's going to be putting this together Yes, it's going to be a robot. So the, the, the thing is, the, the chip is called a link, and the chip is made up of tiny treads. So these treads are very delicate and that they cannot be implanted into human brains with human hands. That's where the, um, that hence the need for the robotic surgeon. So Neuralink has come up, has collaborated with the Woke Design Studios to develop a robotic surgeon that would carry out this very complex um, surgical procedure of putting these tiny treads into the brains of human beings without any form of error. And what they haven't started yet, so far I think they've, they've been testing them on um, animals? Yes, animals, monkeys, pigs. There's a video of um, a monkey playing a video game machine. Video game machine. I think they had to teach the monkey how to play it first, so the monkey could use his brain to play it at, in the next um, trial. Interesting. And so, um, as far as um, getting testing humans, what what prompted uh, Musk? Uh, I guess, or I rather, how did we find out about them wanting to possibly have human trials later in the year? So Musk in 2019 had actually said he was going to start human trials in 2020, right? So earlier in earlier this year, we had a Twitter user tweeting at Elon Musk requesting to be used for the human trial. He's had he's been paralyzed for 20 years, so mm. he requested for this. And Elon to this, Elon Musk responded saying that they were currently in talks with the FDA to ensure the safety of the um, implant implant safety, and that he expects that it's possible that they start human trials towards the end of the year. And, okay, so it's 2021, and we're, I guess, as far as the West is concerned, technology and technology embracing society to mm -hmm. some extent. Um, how do you think society would react? Because it sounds very sci-fi-ish to implant a chip in someone's head, but how do you think society is going to well, you know, react to that? I actually like that you said the West and not Nigeria because... <laughs> Different, not different worlds, yet. right, right. But then in the West, I think it's going to be a mixed reaction, really, because there's still this risk of privacy risk and cybersecurity risk at play here, which would limit um, the acceptance of this technology. But then I still think that to an extent, some people will be accepting of it because it's a cool technology, really. I mean, imagine you being competitive with artificial intelligence. I mean, some people will be interested in it. And also, there's also the issue of a rise in um, brain disorder, cerebrovascular diseases, which may actually spur um, the use of this technology. And then, but the thing is, this technology isn't exactly new, really. Mm. It's been in, um, around for a while now. So neuroscientists have actually said that they have been implanting brain chips in human brain as far back as 2000, and that over about 300,000 people currently have chips in their brains to help with diseases such as the Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. Mm, interesting stuff. All right, great stuff. Um, let's move to uh, Naira Box. The, um, I guess, the lifestyle company. What's the this subscription cinema model? What, how does it work? 
basically you sign up on the naira box app you pay subscribe for a month to watch four movies in the cinema at the price of one that's just basically what it's about uh -huh. So how, okay, so if, if the, well, how does the business model work? I mean, if you're thinking of the number of films that uh, you would see, well, today's a Friday, for instance, right? So uh, you know, as if, if, if one goes to, okay, great, there's four weekends in a month. Yeah. So does the business model work based on, you know, if one was going to the cinemas on a regular basis without using the app and paying each time they went, as opposed to subscribing for four films for the price of one? How, 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 how do you think the math works out? Well, the thing is, looking at the business model, I don't think it's a very sustainable one mm. with what you've explained. Because if you go, if you say movie ticket is 2000 or 15, let's say 2000 and you go four times a month, you're going to be spending 8000 The cinemas will be making 8000 per person, right? But now, if someone goes four times a month, they'll be making only 2000 naira, which is not very cost effective. But then when you look at the what the, pan the impact the pandemic has had on the industry, it's been a lot and then it's impacted their revenues negatively. So they're just trying to drive traffic. I think it's a good marketing strategy in the short term, but then looking at it medium term, long term, I do not think that it's sust is a sustainable strategy or business model in itself. Mm. Do you think um, it, could, it could possibly get people uh, or rather revive interest or activity as far as going back into uh, the cinemas uh, you know, this year? Yes, I think to an extent it can actually revive the cinema industry. I mean, look at it. We have currently, we have inflation reports released yesterday to 20.8 or something yeah, percent. Yeah. And then all of this has impacted um, disposable income. There's been a limit to what consumer spending, right? But then even despite this, people still want to have fun. I mean, I may not have money, but if I have the opportunity to have fun within my means, I'll take it. So with this um, service, People want to go, oh, I can go to cinema four times for the price of one. Yes, I think that people would jump, would jump at them, this opportunity. So I think that with this, it might actually help boost the cinema industry a bit. Well, what about the competition from the streaming services, the Arise Plays and uh, Iroko TVs and um, Netflixes of the world? What about competition from streaming? I do not think that the competition will be so high when you look at it from looking at it with, from the average man's perspective, right? Because data is involved with streaming, yeah. and data is a huge amount of money. People that already have a limit in their spending income, they don't want to spend as much on data. And the higher um, income people in the higher income bracket, they wouldn't mind they would do it. But then, like, if you look at it from the average man in the street, data, with data, I don't think that they, that would that would cause the, the um, digital platforms to have a negative impact on this feature. And also, when you look at it, movies that are released in the cinemas are blockbuster movies. And it takes a while before they are listed on the digital platforms. And more, a lot of people are interested in seeing movies when they come out, like, have you watched this, have you watched that? So with that, I don't think that the um, digital platforms would impact this service in very large way. If the subscription service, or well, we have less than a minute to go, uh, so briefly if you can, if the subscription service, if this does work, do you think competitors, because everybody, other businesses have apps, do you think others will, others will pick up on this and, and copy? Well, some may, but then I think that wise businesses will look at, the look inward and see if they can afford to do this kind of marketing strategy. And I think that would drive whether some businesses pick it or not. Mm, interesting stuff. Huh? Very interesting. We'll see how it works out. Uh, Maiwa Ige, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thank you so much for taking us through the plans of Neuralink and, uh, and Narabox. They both start with an N. I just realized that just now. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.